Hi folks, Pat Healy here for the Laker News. We are presenting our candidate interviews for Lower Sackville Beaverbank. Incumbent Paul Russell and Billy Gillis are vying to be the representatives in the October 19th municipal election. We wanted to give residents a chance to ask questions to the candidates that may help in their decision-making process. We asked the community to submit the questions. We had a great response and had a tough task narrowing it down to the eight questions that we are going to ask each candidate. Thank you to Joanne Poulin of EXP Realty for sponsoring these video interviews. Now let's go hear what the candidates have to say. I'm with Paul Russell who is running for re-election in Lower Sackville Beaverbank. Give us a little background about yourself. Thank you, Pat. So I'm Paul Russell and I've been the councillor here in Lower Sackville for five years and I've accomplished an awful lot in this area. With the expansion to Beaverbank, there's a lot more to do and the issues are completely different. It's, it's really interesting to see the, the difference in nature between the, sub the suburban area that is Lower Sackville and the near rural area that is, that is Beaverbank. Some of what I've accomplished includes the expansion of the sports stadium, trying to clean up First Lake that is right beside us, uh, getting traffic calming and making the street safer with more pedestrian activated signals than we've ever seen in Lower Sackville or in Beaverbank, and dealing with hundreds of issues of uh, for residents, trying to satisfy the individual things, land use bylaw concerns and, and things like that. What we're also facing is a growing population and all of the challenges that come along with that, including housing and what to do and, and how the, the pace of population growth uh, compares to the pace of housing growth. And at this point, the pace of population growth is faster than the pace of housing growth, and we've got to fix that, either by slowing down the population growth, and that's a federal issue, or by speeding up uh, the housing growth, and that is a municipal and a developer and a provincial issue. And so we're working through all of that to, to try and get all of that done, but also trying to increase the infrastructure that we need uh, to accommodate the growing population and the growing housing needs. And this isn't, it isn't just housing. If we're looking at the doubling of population, we need to consider doubling housing and transportation and communication and water service and wastewater service and solid waste and education and health and so many more things. It's a huge problem over the next while. And with the growth of uh, the population and with the development of housing, the personality of Lower Sackville and of Beaverbank may change. And we're really working hard to try and make sure that the personality, that the culture of our communities remains to be what the residents, what those of us who live in Lower Sackville and Beaverbank want it to be. And, and I think that is going to be the, the biggest challenge of the next generation, is making sure that Lower Sackville and Beaverbank remain as we would like to see it. All right, now let's get into the questions. Some good questions from the community. What made you decide to seek re-election for a councillor this year? This year, um, it is an important year. We have a number of projects started. Uh, there are a lot of the, uh, the housing considerations that are underway, of course. There's the suburban plan that we are uh, moving forward with. It's not moving forward as fast as I would like to see it, but that's because of the Housing Accelerator Fund taking uh, some resources away from it because we need more housing. So the suburban plan is holding off a little bit. With that holding off, we're holding off the expansion of the water service boundary, the wastewater service boundary, and the transit service boundary. This is where water and wastewater and transit might be able to go as it's pushed out further. So we need to, we need to take care of that. There are also... Um, again, a number of issues related to uh, making sure that Sackville remains the way that we want it to be and Beaver Bank remains the way we want it to be. This uh, has to do a lot with the height of development in Lower Sackville and the density of development in Beaver Bank and making sure that people have the right transportation into and out of Beaver Bank. That's, that's going to be a huge issue over the next little while. And I think with the JRTA report coming out in November. I'm hoping it will address some of it, but I'm not sure. All right. Uh, 
The next question is, with the current transportation issues and more construction happening, what is your plan for evacuation in case of emergency in Beaverbank? And that's a, that's a great question. So this was highlighted when we uh, had the wildfire last year in Hammonds Plains. It, it drove home just how much of a need there is to make sure that we don't have just one way in and one way out, and that really defines Beaverbank Road. And, and, and so it's a, it's a very timely question, and we now have the ability to uh, look at it and to resurrect what had been talked about in the past, which is a road that goes from Marjison Drive wrapping around Beaverbank and Fall River and coming out to the 102 with a number of offshoots from Beaverbank Road. At this point, if you live on the Sackville side of Beaverbank up to Galloway, you do have another way out on Wingate, but the traffic there is going to be very congested. Uh, if you're beyond that, it's simply a matter of driving the other way. Uh, and that's going to be a massive amount of, trans of uh, traffic getting out in every direction. So by having the road that is parallel to Beaverbank with the, with the exits off of Beaverbank Road, uh, that will accommodate a lot. That is a provincial road, and so we have to work closely with the province to make sure that that stays uh, moving forward uh, and, and that we are able to see progress in that. It won't be built in the next few years, but it, we can certainly move it forward. How will you advocate to ensure Lower Sackville is not receiving a disproportionate number of unhoused individuals as compared to other areas? And, and that's another great question. We have had a challenge over the past year, year and a half, two years, where we were seeing uh, the encampments here in Lower Sackville grow. And, and everybody recognized that that became a challenge. Uh, there were some management issues with that, there were some supply issues, there were donation issues, there were garbage issues, there were cleanliness issues. There were all sorts of things that were challenges with that. Um, Halifax is still very much aware, the staff at Halifax, uh, at HRM, is, is still very much aware of the challenges of that in Sackville and that the people of Sackville really don't want to see that again. We were, we were the first place that saw that type of thing outside of core Halifax and Dartmouth. And the staff of, of HRM knows that uh, that simply cannot happen here again. So we are working with them uh, to make sure that any time that we do see uh, someone who is living rough, uh, that that is taken care of. If they have a place to go, we move the, move the uh, folks along if we can. The challenge is we don't have enough places for people to go. Um, there is an annual cycle of this. Uh, we see fewer people who are intense through the winter and more people who are intense through the summer. And where we are heading into winter, hopefully we will be able to take care of that um, and then just prepare for next summer. Will you support the expansion of Sandy Lake Park by another 1,800 acres? Sandy Lake, uh, the Sandy Lake Park has already been growing. HRM has already been uh, purchasing a number of properties quietly, uh, making sure that all of these real estate transactions uh, are happening. So the park is growing. Um, we are doing it a piece at a time. And the reason we're doing it uh, quietly uh, is, is because we don't want to give too much of a competitive advantage to any one person. If they say, my parcel of land is in the middle of what could be the Sandy Lake Park, so I'm just going to jack the price up incredibly. Um, so we've already been doing that. I've already been supporting it. Okay. Given new housing development, what will you do to mitigate traffic pressures on Beaverbank Road and how? There's a lot of stuff that goes into this. Um, part of it is recognizing that at this point, we don't have very good transit service in Beaverbank. We need to do two things. The first thing we need to do is expand the urban transit boundary out to Ivy Meadows. This is the boundary that I mentioned earlier that says that buses can go along it, but it doesn't say buses will go along it. The second thing we need to do is work with Halifax Transit to make sure that we get the bus routes out to Beaverbank and out to Lucasville. This is part of the suburban plan and this is what will be discussed over the next couple of years. As we get more people onto buses, hopefully the 
traffic pressure will be reduced. As we build the road that goes outside of Beaverbank from Mergerson Drive to the 102, hopefully traffic pressures will be reduced. There's a lot that goes into that, and, and hopefully those are two portions of, of the answer. We've already seen a lot of people working from home, and that is certainly helping. For that, we also need to increase uh, communication so that we have broadband, we have high-speed internet, we have cell service everywhere. That's another issue that the, that the province is dealing with and that we are absolutely supporting them on. All right. With a growing population, what are your plans in terms of securing appropriate services for the community, such as safety, education, water, power supply, health, and traffic? That is a, that is a list that uh, I have been talking about and beating the drum about basically since I've been elected. Um, water, wastewater, transportation, communication, housing, education, health care, all of it, uh, and much more, is something that we really need to work on. This is something that we won't be able to put in place today, but we can start the planning today, or we can start the planning a few years ago, and some of that has happened. Um, I mentioned a, a minute ago the JRTA, the Joint Regional Transportation Agency, they are going to be releasing a report in November uh, that talks about what HRM can look like from a transportation perspective, not just HRM, but an hour outside of HRM. So everybody who comes to our community and, and commutes here, how do, we, how do we address that? Um, I've also been talking with uh, Nova Scotia Power and trying to make sure that their grid is uh, stronger, is more robust, more resilient to what we've seen with the hurricanes and, and with everything else that we've seen. I've also been uh, working with Halifax Water. I'm on the Halifax Water Board about making sure that we are trying to move ahead with, with doubling the capacity of both the water and the wastewater system uh, over the next 40 years. This is something that is going to be the hardest thing for us to be able to uh, to tackle. And so I spoke with the MP, Daryl Sampson, uh, just a few days ago about some of these challenges and, and the most difficult one being Halifax water. We can replace power poles and we can replace communication and we can build new buildings and all of that is relatively easy, although it's really hard, um, because they're above ground. But when we go to replace the water pipes, they're underground, so we would have to rip up a lot of streets in order to be able to double the capacity of the water and wastewater systems. As far as education and healthcare, this is community building. And so what we need to do is look at attractive land, if it has nothing on it, and say, we want a school to go here, and we want a hospital to go here. Mr. Developer, you can build the rest of your community around that, but that space is for a school, and that space is for a hospital. It won't be developed yet. It'll be developed in a few years, a decade maybe. Um, but it's coming, and we've got to prepare for that type of thing now, where we are looking ahead to see what it's going to look like in 40 years, and then work backwards to make sure that we get the right pieces in place now, the right planning, the right start of all of these things. All right, uh, next question is, some residents have concerns with the location of the pallet homes in Lower Sackville. What will you do for those, res those residents that feel impacted? A few days ago, I went and spoke with a lot of those residents. Um, some of them are still impacted, and, and it's, it's, it's not good. Uh, we have seen some challenges still in the neighborhood. They aren't the challenges that we saw a year ago. What was there a year ago? It has gotten a lot better. There have been some changes with the management uh, of what is going on at the shelter. Uh, there have been some changes with the residents at the shelter. Um, and there have been some changes with the layout of the land at the shelter. And all of that has contributed to make things easier. I'm going to continue to uh, try and work with the residents and try and work with the organization that is managing the shelter to try and make sure that any issues that I'm aware of the management of the shelter becomes aware of so that they can be mitigated. I don't like to see the disruption in the community and I'm going to do everything I can to address that disruption when I hear about it. 
With many newcomers, we also have varying needs for language and communication in local communities. What can we expect to see from our next council member to improve when it comes to in being an inclusive community for all? I hope you mean the current council member. The One of the things that we are doing um, at HRM is recognizing the incredible diversity uh, that we have in the population and the diversity of languages. If you call 311 and you don't speak English, we have a number of people and a number of services that are available to deal with over a hundred different languages. So from the corporate perspective, we can deal with that. From an individual perspective, communication is really difficult because I am the only one really that supports my communication. Um, I have a person who helps me out at City Hall to take care of some of the administration side of things. But when it comes to communication for myself, uh, it, it is really all on my shoulders. So I'm doing everything that I can to make sure that I reach as many people as I can with the print newsletters uh, that I send out twice a year, uh, with the regular communications on social media uh, that goes out and, and with everything else that I'm doing. It is all in one language because that's what I have the ability to do at this point. It would be great to be able to say my, my tweet, my Facebook post, whatever it is, uh, can go out in many different languages. We don't have that capability yet. I plan on working on that to uh, make sure that that happens. One of the other things is I'm on the Accessibility Advisory Committee with HRM. And although this deals mainly with physical accessibility issues and, and what gen people generally think of as someone who is a uh, wheelchair user, um, two of the other classifications that fit into this are those who have uh, vision impairments uh, or, or those who have hearing impairments. And we've got to be able to address those individuals as well. So it's not just multiple languages, it's the disabilities within uh, within everybody that, uh, or within every population uh, that we might not see. Summarize why you should be the one that residents vote for. So now with his summary. Thank you. I am Paul Russell. I'm the city councillor for Lower Sackville District 15 and Beaver Bank is being added to that. I've been doing a lot over the past five years to try and move our community forward, to try and get things done that people need to be done. We've talked a lot about housing, and housing is very important, but we can't just have places for people to live. We also have to have things for people to do. And that's why recreation has taken a very big uh, portion of my time with the expansion of the sports stadium, with cleaning up First Lake, um, <coughs> with uh, uh, the proposed new lacrosse facility and everything else that is going on. I've helped out uh, Sackville Minor Baseball with lights down on uh, Sackville Drive. I've helped out the schools. I've helped out many of the community groups and I've helped out hundreds of residents. It's a great community. A lot of work has started and there's still a lot of work to do. And so on October 19th, I'm asking for your support to re-elect me, Paul Russell, as the councillor for District 15, Lower Sackville, and Beaver Bank. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pat. Thanks for watching our candidate interviews. We hope that the answers provide a better idea on where the candidates stand with regards to concerns and issues in our community. Municipal politics is the one level of government that impacts us greatly. So it's important to make sure you get out and cast your vote. Advanced online and telephone voting is from October 8th to 16th, while advanced in-person voting is October 12th and October 15th. For more information, check out the HRM elections page. Thank you to Joanne Poulin of ESP Realty for sponsoring this video interviews. Pat Healy for the Laker News in Lower Sackville.